this conversation. So, yeah, we paint with Rin. We, uh... We go to the lunch, and then we, like, you know, hang out with her and Lily. So it's, like, such a weird thing. <clears throat> Seems a bit stupid to me, really. But I suppose this way, at least I can tell the nurse honestly that I'm doing something about my health. Not that I was ever much of a runner to begin with. Can't hurt to try, I guess. Surprised to discover that I'm not the only one at the track. Miss Ibarazaki. She, oh, she imitates Misha imitating Shizune, failing to get the same kind of subdued l lilt into her high-pitched voice. How could I forget such an er blunt introduction? And he has the decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment before giggling. Yeah, sorry about that. Again. Well, as long as you don't make a habit of it, I suppose I'll be fine. Great. Not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy consultant the nurse ta was talking about was actually you? Then we move on. Frankly, I don't remember if there's any particular form for running, but I can't help but feel like I'm doing it wrong somehow. I feel awkward in comparison to Emmy, who never seems to break stride. I don't think I want to do this anymore. I'm not really being up to more than a couple of laps today, and a slow to walk pretty quickly. Didn't even get the option to uh, keep running or not. Or maybe it's gonna... Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes me a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to another somewhat gasping demeanor. Yeah, she didn't even give us the option to keep running or not. Apart from feeling more tired than before, I don't think I've accomplished anything today. I'm so out of shape, it's embarrassing. The whole thing might have been a waste of time. I'll find some other way. Okay, you you shouldn't say it's embarrassing that you're out of shape because one, you have a heart condition, and two, you were in a hospital bed for months, right? Like, you couldn't do anything. It's fine if you're out of stamina. I head back to the dorms and wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long hot shower. I'm tired from all the running, so I just want to unwind. I don't really want to break my slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. After taking a long shower anyway, I dry myself off and get to the stall and put on my clothes. Where we see Kenji in his naked body. <laughs> Kenji's insane, bro. I know we talk a lot of shit here on this show, but Kenji's Kenji's a real one. He's only looking out for his bros. You know? We might He might hate women, but you know, he does his part. Anyway. Speaking of doing my part, um, we're going to say I've done my part, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Why am I being dragged into this again? I've done more than enough, I think. If you're angry with Lily, this has nothing to do with me. Now, wait just a second. Are you implying that the president is more right, more right in scolding me than yourself? Ah, damn, I think I could have worded that better. Oh, I feel so bad getting Lily pissed at us, because she was so nice. No, I don't know about that, but... I mean, hmm. What are you saying, Hee-chan? It's just that I hardly think it's fair that you can say that, seeing that I've helped you guys. The mood has changed. This is somehow a showdown between two gunfighters now. Well, it was like that before, too, but this time Shizune's focus is on me. So either way, no matter what we said, Shizune was pissed at us. There was no winning here. And so is Lily's. Though she keeps quiet, I'm afraid I inadvertently pissed her off. Hmm. Are you saying I'm wrong? What a dangerous situation. It's too early to argue with you. Yes, I think it's unfair of you to get on my case. Hmm. Yi Chen, you want too much, but you have a point. Okay, okay, okay. You're not lazy, Yi Chen. Okay, maybe that would have been the right option for Shizune, because she, she's still pissed, but like at least we're like we we worked a little. Shizune pushes her glasses up with her thumb, almost approvingly. Oh, yeah. She just likes a little fight back. She just, she just wants a little pushback. That's good. If you're not useless, then you shouldn't let anyone say you are. Okay. The next time I say it, it'll be because you're disappointing me at, like, Miss Class Rep here. So don't let it go to your head. Lily takes this jab silently, a venomous visage of frozen on her face, her visage. Class Rep, Shi chan says, don't forget that report, please. I won't. Would that be all? Yep. Then, good day to you all. She's so pissed. Her voice cut the air in the classroom in half. With a 
if it was more tangible. <laughs> it hurts, bro. Lily leaves the room, understandably in a bad mood, but managing to be as poised and calm as usual. Shizune, you really didn't have... You really went a little far today. It's true, she chan just a little. If I had been expecting Shizune to grudgingly admit, I have a point there as well. I think I was expecting too much. She doesn't respond. Hmm. <laughs> Shizune, she thinks you should mind your own business. He chan we have a few last minute things to take care of before class. We might be late, so could you cover for us? Yeah. Perfect. Yay! Okay, thanks, he chan they walk outside, even though there are only ten minutes left before the bell will ring, signaling the start of class. That felt bad. I did not like that. Hanako doesn't come to morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. We've been covering the same amount of pages each day, so reading ahead is more or less giving myself a preview of what tomorrow's lesson will be about. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead of opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on the blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. Oh god, she's there. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, not noticing Misha's head poking over my shoulder until she's almost on top of me. What are you doing? I try to strike a balance between being quiet enough not to draw attention to myself, but loud enough to draw hers. What are you doing, Hichan? Panic shoots me through as Misha starts talking at her normal volume, and I sputter out a hasty reply, still keeping my voice down despite the fact that she just blew any hope of being discreet I may have had. Copying down the stuff. What are you doing? Why so loud? Aw, really? But it's all in the book. That's why no one else is copying it down. I know. Why are you so loud? Why are you so quiet, he chan <laughs> It's hard to hear you. <laughs> I look around to see if anyone's noticing our conversation, and it's pretty obvious that everyone has, even the teacher. Shizune smiles coyly, and I start to wonder if Misha's been doing this because she told her to. Is it because of what happened between her and Lily earlier? This is what I get for trying to be reasonable, for trying to take the middle path. Shizune is too prideful, although by now I should know to expect that kind of behavior from her. Why are you doing this? Huh? Misha is totally oblivious to the awkward stare that the teacher is giving both of us. Well, trying to balance her textbook with on one finger, for a brief second it looks as if she thinks could get ugly, but the teacher simply looks away, as if it's not worth the trouble. I guess this is a good thing, as I slump back into my seat in relief. Jesus. The rest of the day passes uneventfully, and this time I'm able to appreciate that it does. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry. I, should, I always wait for this. I have coffee today. I don't know if I mention. We always have a different drink. This time it's like coffee, coffee. It's not like the, <clears throat> the baby coffee. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry, so I stay for a while reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave the last... Leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with the crowding in the hallways. I notice Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune is signing so fast, her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Oh my god. Just ching, 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 ching. <laughs> Sorry, that was dumb. Please don't clip that. Misha is trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she could barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business probably way over my head. Not just that, but Shizune also seems angry, although it could just be her normal severity making it appear so. Shizune signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she even trips over herself, like she's dealing tongue twisters. And then on top of that, she has to sign back anything that the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished, and the girls sit down in their seats again. <sighs> I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. Festival prep must be pretty tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone to be so enthusiastic about it. Probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Shizune starts signing at me, and Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. 
She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. Well, we're right in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. Sarcasm. Huh? The tone of Shizune's actions makes me think she's speaking with disdain, but Misha interprets it normally, replacing whatever intent there may have been with her own chipper twist on things. Still disorienting, and I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Never mind. How could I forget? You two trying to get me to join at least twice a day. <laughs> but he chan some could say the work is too much. It'd be nice if students were to show a little more support for their leadership, some appreciation of the ones who are working so hard to make it all possible. Maybe, for example, a little help that's asking too much, is it? Yep, help would be appreciated from students like you. Why do I feel like we're on the Shizune route? This doesn't feel right. If students would show their dedication to the school spirit and offer some help, well, I don't exactly need it. But I wouldn't necessarily refuse it, so it would be nice if someone would... Oh, hello. Hanako. I look over my shoulder to see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away at the door, point where her fingers can be seen wrapped around nervous around the edge of the door. Sorry. Maybe she's showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it all as well. You seem to have momentarily forgotten about trying to get me to stay for the rest of the day. What is it, Hanako? Has Lily here? Sorry, Sato is not here. She, uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she's intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little funny, though, watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people from two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? Hmm. If she has any sense in her head, she's in a classroom working on the festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? She might be slacking off somewhere, just like Ichan. <laughs> Damn, what is with Shizune and her need to point out stuff like this? Hanako nods quickly and retreats with haste. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. We are working really hard to make things happen. <clears throat> the festival happen. And driving other people insane along the way. Well, good luck with that. I stand up to leave, making it as it before either of them manages to berate me any more for slacking off. The halls seem somewhat quiet, as expected. Everyone must be in club meetings. She's in his words about being a slacker echo in my head. I feel a bit guilty about not contributing, but I seem to lack the resolve to do something to constant concrete about the matter. For the festival, it's too late already, unless I count helping Shizune and Misha, which I naturally don't, and clubs. I don't know. Maybe I'm not a club type of person. Halfway through the... Oops. Halfway through the way from the school building to the dorms, I spot a figure in front of the dorms. It's Rin. It looks like she's working on her mural today, too. I walk over to her, but she doesn't seem to notice me approaching. She's sitting on an unturned box, looking intently at the wall she's painting with her brush held between her toes. The mural has progressed considerably since yesterday, but it's still only half done as far as I can tell. More colors have appeared and the twisted human-like figures have spread and increased number. This painting is crazy. It looks like a fucking Jojo piece of work. I have to say, the style is quite eye-catching and very unique. Not that I would be knowledgeable about art by any measure scale, and it's very nice looking, nevertheless. I clear my throat to get her attention, but not to startle her so that her concentration won't break. Wait. God, it's been so long since we read his rant. She doesn't even turn to check who it is. I'll wait. <laughs> We're just waiting. Fifteen minutes later, I decide that her concentration is indeed unbroken, and also that I have waited long enough to warrant poking her gently on her shoulder to remind her of my presence. Rin turns her head mechanically to my direction, and ends up staring at my crotch level. Oh, it says how. <laughs> she could tell? I would feel a lot less comfortable, uncomfortable if she would look at my face. An astute observation. Hard at work, I see. So are you. <laughs> the conversation starts, and I hadn't been here for a quarter of an hour already. 
that's not a concern. At least it starts looking good. <laughs> it does. It does. The layers of painting, hiding other layers of paint, mixing and shaping the human figures, really creates an impressive look. But Rin looks miffed. You shouldn't comment on works of progress. Seven years bad luck. Sounds terrible. I guess I'll take it back then. Still, it looks good. I wonder if I get 14 years of bad luck for thinking that. Rin turns back to looking at her painting and pokes it with a big toe. Could you mix some of this color? I'm running out of it. She looks down a bit at the... Oh, sorry. I don't know what I'm reading. She looks down at the half-empty bowl with the remains of the same pinkish paint in it. I didn't really intend to stay and help her with this project, though. I guess I didn't intend to do anything much. I look at Rin. She looks emptily back at me. Just this once. Rin picks up another brush and drenches it in another tone of pale red. There are dozens of similar bowls all around her working area, and from the looks of this scene, she could have been sitting there for hours. I wonder if she has. That would mean she'd been skipping school, though, which, of course, she would put beyond someone like Rin. I pour a little bit of white into the red bowl, trying to match the color with the one already on the wall. I can't seem to get it right. It's really inconvenient of her not to mix enough in the first place. Getting it to be exactly the same tone would be impossible, but at least I can try to get as close as I can. Speaking of hard work, isn't that a huge workload for you, too? It's such a big painting and all. Oh, I'm not old and bitter enough to think like that yet. <laughs> I guess you aren't. You guessed right. <laughs> I love her. Legs hurt, though. They feel like slugs. Slugs made of seat slugs. <laughs> because of the position? Yeah, I like doing a horizontal position more. If you know what I'm talking about. But it can't be helped. Can ask the wall to lay down. Saying that, she stretches herself a little, bending her legs and far back more than a human should flex. It's astonishing how effortlessly she manages to move her body around. There is a small flinch in her otherwise blank expression, a hint of pain, maybe, as she stretches out her calves. That's crazy. <laughs> Rin must have the stamina and dexterity far above a normal person to be able to live like she does. But she's wearing out <clears throat> working like this. Why push yourself so much? Take a break on something at least. Continue tomorrow if it's bad. This gives her a pause. A long one, too. Feeling like a mental yawn. Hmm. I don't think so, Sal. I'm not pushing myself. Sure looks like you are. No. It's not about pushing or pulling or anything related to that kind of thing. There's this boy. A boy? Yes. Where? At the art club. Uh, and? He is blind. How can you paint if you're blind? No idea. So why is he there? That's the point. He is there. She really should speak more than one word at a time to make this feel like a discussion, unless like an interrogation. He can't really do anything that you'd call art, right? But he comes there anyway, and paints. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. That's why I asked. <laughs> So? He doesn't paint often, but I think his paintings are very interesting. I'm sure they are. I once tried that, painting with my eyes closed. It wasn't too interesting, and, clean, and cleaning the floor took ages. Didn't try it again. But he is becoming better at sculpting. I see. Maybe she was trying to make a point with this. Maybe she forgot she had one. I don't think it was a point. I think she's just telling a story. Seems like the art club is full of interesting people. Not really. Pretty blunt statement, and she totally missed the sarcasm. No? Just like I said. They're not very interesting. I usually don't have much interest in people who are not interesting. Maybe you have. Maybe. <laughs> but that boy is interesting. Maybe I'm like that boy. Maybe you are. Maybe everyone is. Doing things you can't do just because you can. That's pretty deep, I think. And tell that to her. You're a deep one. Nah. I'm a really shallow and thoughtless person. People say that to me all the time. Did you know that I can only think of four things at the same time? No, but I do now. Right now I'm thinking of the second floor's girl's toilet, ice cream flavored ice cream, the middle toe, and a haircut. I'm gonna need a haircut. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> she shakes her head around vigorously, letting out a short and messy hair ruffle wildly around. I can see that doing it is something she likes to do. 
We fall silent as Rin treads around absentmindedly, poking some brushes around. The thought of the art club sticks in my head for a while longer. I feel like I'm treading on very unknown territory with art, the way these meetings with Rin go. It's as though I'm starting a smoking habit or something. I should probably stop talking with her. <laughs> Sorry, so... It's not like I dislike her, despite the confusion of being herself causes, and I don't dislike art either. I've even drawn for fun sometimes. I just don't have a real creative drive or any technical skill. <laughs> so if I were to draw something, I get white paper syndrome and just freeze completely. That, or I manage to draw something disfigured and promptly get frustrated at my inability to put the picture in my head down on the paper. Then call it quits without even trying to make an effort. Rin clearly doesn't have this problem, but she frustrates me in another way. Being with her is like looking into a mirror that doesn't reflect anything. Like a like a wall? You mean like a wall? <clears throat> it makes one question <laughs> the sanity of the act. Rin sits down in her box, swaying from side to side, apparently comfortable with the uncomfortable silence. She's staring at me again, or maybe over my shoulder. I can't quite figure out where her eyes are focused. I'm thinking of leaving so she can carry on working undistracted and that I can do whatever I'm going to do alone. It's not like I have anything that must be done today. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Who? <laughs> Nobody. I just forgot to tell Hanako and that Lily was looking for her. Do you know her from my class? Oh, her. The mystery toilet girl. That person's funny. I saw her going to the toilet five times during one recess three weeks ago. I'm sure it's the world record. Okay, so that's where she goes. I thought she went to, like, the, the tea room. That's interesting. It was very mysterious. That's why you call her Mystery Toilet Girl? What other reason that could there possibly be? Well, if there is, it's an internal, eternal mystery. I didn't follow her in there. Maybe it was a week before that. It could have been. Get her makes me hungry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> at least not around her. Rin turns to look at me blankly as if she's not sure why I reproved her. But she doesn't acknowledge understanding any more than before, so I give up at this point. So, do you want to go eat dinner then? No, not yet. Rin has turned her hungry gaze back to the wall, looking slightly more energetic, or at least slightly less lethargic than she did before. It's as if the wall is an opponent she has to vanquish, something that she must overcome before she can indulge in dinner. <clears throat> this is the feeling I get. A weird sense of empathy overcomes me and makes me smile a little bit to myself. For all her oddity, Rin is pretty cool after all. I'll be going anyway. Have fun. Rin already grasped a brush and is dipping into fresh paint, so of course she can't hear me anymore or doesn't answer anything if she does. I'm feeling so... I'm feeling tired, so I set my alarm clock to wake me up as late as I can afford, while still making it to the first class. The nurse's voice is almost nagging me in the back of my head about morning jogs. I make a resolution to wake up for it. Make up for it by going a walk after school tomorrow. Emmy won't care either way, I bet. Maybe. <laughs> 